Hey everybody, it's Joel Irway, author of the number one ranked Kindle study guide on Amazon, 30 minute EIT, how to beat the FE exam without beating your head. Also owner of dailyfeexamprep.com. And today I'm very excited to be sharing with you something I've never done before. Um, I, I've been going back and forth with this over a while, uh, for a while now, and uh, I wanna share with you uh, the exact formula and the exact strategy that I used to pass the exam. And the same strategy is that my coaching clients, my students who I work with, one-on-one, -on -one, the same strategies that they're using to pass the exam because the uh, I, I don't think this, this should be hidden. I don't think this should be exclusive. And so uh, this is what allowed me to kind of uh, push back the notion that I needed to know everything to pass the exam. And I know that's a big, that's a big uh, myth that a lot of people believe. They think that they need to know all of the exam to pass, and it's absolutely not true. So what I'm doing for you today is I'm actually going to, I recorded a quick presentation for you, and I'm going to show you the exact FE focus formula that uh, all of my students have been using. Everyone who's read my book, uh, they had the exact same formula in there. And uh, it's, it's what I used to pass the exam. So I want to share that with you uh, over the next, uh, I think it's about nine minutes or so. So it's not too long. I tried to keep it as short and condensed as possible, possible so, you can, so you can take this video and run with it and use it for your own uh, FE study plan. So enjoy the video. At the end, I do have a link if you want to uh, subscribe to my list. I have more training videos that I'd love to send you. So um, there is a link at the end of the video if you want to click that and just hit, hit uh, subscribe. Uh, put in your email address and I'll send the videos right to you. So um, enjoy these, enjoy this video. Uh, do me a favor down below, leave a comment, like the video, tell me what you think. Um, I know that you're going to enjoy it. I hope that it really reshapes your focus for the exam. So take care and I'll be talking to you soon. Hey everybody. Okay, so I want to get started with this presentation and give you the exact formula that I use to take the exam. But before I do, I just want to tell you a story, a true story about my $600 mistake when I took the FE exam. So I took the exam with my buddy, Matt, who was another engineering student that I went to college with. And we were both in the consulting uh, realm. We were working as HVAC design engineers. And when he convinced me to take the exam, he's like, okay, well, I know we've got a lot of weak subjects that we, we need to study on. So let's take this, you know, let's take a review course. Okay, that sounded great. Sounded like a great idea. So we signed up for this review course that was going to be taught on the weekends over the course of, I don't know, five or six weeks. So it was going to be taught on Saturday and Sunday. And we could attend live online and, uh, and they were going to teach us every subject that was on the exam. Perfect. Sounded exactly, sounded like it was exactly what we needed because we were going to be weak in some of the subjects and we knew that we needed some help. So what we ended up doing was we went and logged on for the first few weeks and it was just, it was very, very inefficient. Um, I know that a lot of people got a lot of value out of it, but for me personally, you know, being put into this, into this review class where there is, you know, a few hundred other students and everybody is asking questions while the while the professor is online kind of teaching it it was just a uh, it was a very inefficient process so thankfully in week two uh, we were getting to these subjects where i knew that i needed the most help in which was electricity and magnetism so we get to that subject and and the professor you know it's it's it was a crash course he was trying to teach an entire curriculum's worth of material in eight hours and so by the end of it, I went through and did some practice problems and I realized I didn't get any more right than I did before I started that review course. So I was very, very discouraged. Well, I ended up canning it and I, 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 uh, I stopped going to the classes and just started studying on my own. And my friend ended up continuing with the classes. So um, by the end of it, I ended up passing the exam with the strategy I'm about to show you and my friend didn't. And he was the one who stuck with that program the entire way. So let me share with you how I, uh, I was able to kind of reverse that and come up with my own strategy uh, so you don't make the same mistake. And so the strategy that I developed, I call it now the FE focus formula. And this is the strategy that I teach in my book, 30 Minute EIT, and it was only privileged to the people who were actually signed up as my coaching clients. But I want to share it with you right now because I don't think this should be hidden anymore. So let's get right to it. So the first thing that you need to do in order to uh, kind of reshape your focus and, and understand how you should be studying for this test is you need to go grab your specification over at nces.org. So go to the link above that I'm showing here and grab your exam specification. 
after you do that, you have to kind of realize, you know, what the format is. So the format of the new computer-based test is 110 questions long, and it's given over the course of six hours. So the example that I'm going to show you is the mechanical engineering discipline. So once we get the discipline, or once we get the specifications, what we need to do is we need to list out all of the subjects on the left-hand column. So like I did here, I listed them all out, and then what I did was um, I also listed out the low and high ranges in two separate columns. So you have to understand what NCES does is they tell you, okay, we're going to give you a range of the number of questions that could be asked. So you really don't know how many questions will be on the exam. That's okay because this formula kind of uh, helps work around that. So what you need to do is just list out the low and the high range of each subject on the exam. So at the bottom, what I've done is I've summed up the total of the low range and I've summed up the total of the high range. So get that done and go ahead and sum up the totals. And what we need to do after we, we sum up the ranges is we need to break down our strongest, our mediocre, and our weakest subjects into three categories. And I call it the A, B, and C categories. So category A is going to be the topics where we feel that we can get at least 85% of the answers correct. So these are going to be your strongest subjects, the ones that you're most confident in. They'll be the ones that you probably obtained your degree in. Okay, so category B are going to be the topics where we feel we can get at least 60% of the answers correct. Okay, these are going to be your mediocre, you know, to semi-strong subjects. You know, you expect that you're going to get some of the questions wrong, but, you know, you're, you'd feel a little bit more confident than some of the other subjects. And then finally, category C is going to be the topics where you feel you can get at least 25% of the answers correct. All right, so do you know why I picked 25% for our C column or our weakest columns? Well, odds tell us that even if we guess on the exam for four multiple choice questions, we have a better, ch we have a 25% chance of getting the question correct if we just guess. So what that really means is, you know, these are these are subjects where we're not even really going to focus any of our time on. Um, I will give you some 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 tactics to increase your odds above 25% to get some of these questions right, but we don't want, really want to be spending any time um, studying these subjects. We want to spend the bulk of our time in the A and B categories. Okay, so this is what we need to do next. Okay, so what do we do next? We calculate the percent total from each column and multiply it by the percentage of anticipated correct answers. Now, you might be wondering, how do we compensate for the range factor, uh, the low and high ranges? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to assume worst case scenario. So we're going to assume that we're going to get the low range given to us on the test for A's and B's, meaning we're going to get fewer questions of our strongest subjects given to us on the exam. And we're going to assume worst case scenario for the high range. We're going to assume worst case scenario, meaning we'll have the high range uh, que questions for our C columns. So this gives us a little bit of cushion and wiggle room uh, once we get to the exam. Okay, so here's what it looks like once you do categorize all of your subjects. So what you do is you list, I've listed seven subjects in my A column, uh, five subjects on my B column, and three subjects that I know that I'm really weak in in my C column. And then we put the low percentages and the high percentages according to what we just talked about. So low is going to our A and B column, and the high percentage goes to our C column. And then we sum up the total at the bottom. So I've got 41.5% of the questions are going to come from the A column. 33.3% uh, of the questions on the test are going to be coming from my B column. And then 24.4% of the questions are going to be coming from the C column. Once we have that sum total, now we're going to multiply it by the anticipated percentage of correct answers. So for example, column A would look like this. We take the column A total, which is the low range total, which is 41.5%, and I multiply that by 85% correct. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm going to get 85% of those questions correct, and I get the total anticipated percentage of correct answers on the test from the A column. So 41.5% times 85% gives me 35.2% correct. So I'm anticipating I'm going to get 35.2% of the, of, the, uh, of the test correct from my A column. And all I do is I rinse and repeat for columns B and C. So 33.3% times 60%, that gives me 20% total. 
And then 15.3% uh, times 24.4% gives me 6.1% total. All I do after that is I sum up the totals and it gives me a total value of 61.3%. Now our goal is approximately 60% total. That's what we wanna shoot for because there have been, um, there have been certain review manuals uh, that have told us that the estimated percentage of correct answers that you need to pass is between 50 to 55%. So I shoot for 60% to give us a little bit of a buffer room and uh, that seems to work out well for all of my students. So what, what happens if we don't hit 60% of our goal? Well, you just all that tells you is that you need to reprioritize. So you probably have too many subjects um, in your C column or your B column and need to be moving them more towards the left. So you need to move them into the either, either the B or A column. Um, if you're a lot higher than 60%, well, then I suggest moving some more to your B and C column. What this, what this focus formula is, is doing for us is it's allowing us not to have to study everything. I don't want you to think that you have to know everything to pass. That's the whole point of this focus formula. So it helps reshape your mind and reshape your focus so you, can only so you only have to study what really matters.